is words don't do it justice. What does it justice is coming along for your first session and feeling how you feel after that first session. So please try something different. What brought me here was I had been going to counselling for two years previous and uh, counselling did have its place for me. It was great getting things off the conscious mind but I found myself having relapses. Like never, never having consistent progress, I would have a month or two and then gradually I would decline and then retreat and isolate myself and stuff and it was, I was actually sitting outside the barbers one day and I had, I had actually had the link for the spa and I had been referring people but never actually looked over the web page myself until this day and I had a look over the web page and then uh, I just picked up the phone. We basically told them about my struggles with depression and anxiety and my previous and that I was an ambassador for a men's mental health charity and that I wanted to go on and try and make a difference and help other people. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think I had an appointment the next day. It was pretty quick and uh, the first session was amusing. Like I had the, the main chatter on the way down to the appointment no peace at all and uh, I sat down, had a brief chat and uh, I had the best sleep ever and woke up and there was nothing in my head. No, I think I said on the day, like, that was the first time in a long, long time that I've had peace in my head and uh, it was just ongoing after that. There was always a gradual increase, Noth nothing to the extent of the first session because to go from there to there was just phenomenal for me. But uh, there's always progress being made in regard to self-awareness with me. Like, I have a higher sense of self-awareness. I, I know my feelings, I know my emotions. I no longer react to the situations. Like, I would, I would have been a very angry person, reactive, angry, always thought negatively. But no more, I can process a lot more. I can like, take a step back from things and think about things a lot clearer in my head without being reactive. Oh, I wish I'd have found it two years <laughs> sooner. <laughs> it means it means everything. It, it gives me it has given me back control of my life. You know, I'm meeting Terry and Ran and all the staff here. Like the work that they do is unreal, and I want to spread that with other people as well. You know, it's 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 a gift. It's a gift for people to come here. You know, it's an alternative method to medication and, and uh, counselling and stuff, but it's definitely a method that is effective, you know, and as many people as I can need to, need to come. My personal journey, well, I had uh, a long, long time of suffering with depression. As I say, I had a first 22 years of AIDS and I buried it. And then it came back up when I moved to Australia and stuff started coming back up till the extent where I couldn't get out of bed. I felt worthless. I used to look at the floor and go, what's the point in putting my foot in the floor? Because today it's just going to be the same, exact same as yesterday. And there was no point. And uh, it just felt worthless. There was no, no reason to go on. Why should I do anything this day? You know, I was out of work. And uh, not too many people know this, but even as little as two and a half years ago, three years ago, I actually contemplated taking my life. Uh, I still, I, I still get angry about it now because I get angry at myself because I did a lot of self care on myself, but it wasn't enough. You know, I was going to all the counselling sessions. I was doing everything what I thought was right but I still felt alone and isolated and, I, and I, I, I considered how, I didn't want to die. I considered how easy it would be to end all the pain. And I was just, not too many people actually know that. So they don't, but yeah, that was a pretty tough, probably, probably the toughest of all is to actually have those thoughts, you know? And that was before I'd come to bring me on the spa. And again, that was because uh, I was having minor setbacks and things like that, though, you know. So that was clearly just a minor setback in my life. But I just felt even more isolated. I, 
away from friends, I was removing myself from social circles and things like this here. And I found myself getting more isolated and I was just not, not getting the progress that I needed. And it was just like, I, 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 I can definitely understand why people would take their lives because when, when you're in that headspace, you, you just want the pain to end, you just want the head to go, you just, you just want to be at peace. Peace of mind is a great thing, you know, and when you don't get that, you just want to do whatever it takes. And that's, that's where I was at. And I still find it hard now to, to accept that I actually thought, had those thoughts, you know, but I mean, I've never ever had them since, you know. I'm in more control now. This past year has probably been a very, very tough year for me. I've been in and out of work, financial stresses, everything else. If I'd have had all these stresses three, four years ago, I would never have had the mental strength to cope them. Whereas I've been coming to the spa for, it'll be two years now this year, and I've got mental strength, I've got more clarity and understanding. I, I can cope. I can cope with all these life struggles, no problem now. It's great. You know, I've got coping mechanisms that I never had before. And that's where I think the spa has been giving me long term change for my life. Giving me giving me the tools that I've always had but never been able to access. Bring me on the spa has had long term effects from the day one, from my first programme. Like I had long term effects from there. Yes, I'm doing uh, a bike ride called Pedal to Purr for Paul. And uh, Paul is my partner's brother who committed suicide. It'll be three years this December the 9th. So I was, I'd been through my own struggles and then it was coming up the, the year anniversary of Paul's death, the first year anniversary. And I'd been thinking for a way that I wanted to do something to have an impact to reach to reach men who are suffering in silence because I suffered in silence for most of my adult, adult life. I think I first sought help when I was 22 years of age. I think I had two or three sessions and uh, I just buried it all. I just thought, ashamed, it's not what men do. So I just pushed everything down deeper and went on with my life for like another 13 years. And then I just sort of wanted to do something to try and reach guys like me when I was back in my twenties and I came up with I asked I asked Irene, Paul's mum first. I said, This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking a cycle. I wanna finish on the anniversary of Paul's passing. Do you wanna come up with a name for it? And she came up with Paddle the Purr for Paul. And uh, it's over three days. The first day is Margaret River to Bunbury, which is about hundred and four kilometres. And the second day is Bunbury to Mandra, which is around about 100 kilometres. And then the last day is Mandra to Mullaloo Beach. And that is where we scattered Paul's ices. So it'll actually be on the anniversary again. And I'm going to come in it's around sunset, around 6 p.m. at night, because there, there'll be all Paul's friends and family and stuff all there. The, the greet is coming in. And there'll be two of us cycling. The other ambassador for WA, he's going to be cycling on with me this year for all three days. So it should be a good trip. It's, it's always a good good weekend because we have t-shirts made and with all the stats, the charity logos, everything, and the amount of conversations we have, everybody we speak to has been touched by mental illness, anxiety, depression, death by suicide. Someone has been touched one way or another and it's amazing to hear all their stories and their support along the way, it's, it's great. And if we, if we can make an impact by sharing the event page and letting people read the story behind it, why it came about and the reason why we want to do it. We want to reach all the men who are suffering in silence. And I actually forgot about this. I actually wear a black mask when I cycle. And the black mask is to represent the, the men who get up every day and put on a, a mask every day and hide behind it and pretend that they're friends and family. So I, I want to that's the guys I'm targeting, the guys I want to reach out to and give them the courage to try and speak up. You know, they're not alone, they don't have to suffer in silence anymore. It's it's not the way it should be and going forward we want to make a change. I know what I am going to get out of it, a very sore bum, <laughs> that's what I'm going to get. I'm sure I haven't even been on a bike since last year, so I'm just over three weeks out. 
and I haven't been on a bike yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I know what I'm definitely going to get out of it, but uh, for a personal reason, it's more awareness. It's it's reaching those those men suffering in silence. You know, we do have a fundraising link to the page because the event does cost like the first couple of years it cost me money and the guy who said last year you know we're out of pocket a little so we do need funds but the funds just go straight back in to the event they go back into the charity acfc is a not-for-profit charity so all funds go straight back in to trying to like over east coast we run programs and uh youth clubs and stuff foodie clubs soccer clubs whatever it is you know we're we're trying to target the kids, you know, educate them and let them know that it's okay not to be okay and that being sad, angry, emotional is all basic human emotions which all men suffer just like women. Because before Paul, I was guilty of used to thinking suicide was selfish, you know. And I've, op I've had a whole change since that event, you know, through my own struggles, even having the thoughts I've had, you know, I don't believe anyone ever wants wants to end their life, they want to end the pain and suffering they're going through, you know, and when you're isolated, that's where the pain and suffering comes from, because you're stuck in your own head, you're you're not socialising with people, you're not talking to people, and then the brain takes over, and it can lead you down a very, very dark path, you know, so by doing things like a cycle, and hearing my story, and the concept behind it, we want to try and have an impact. You know, if, I, if one person sees our page and reads the story, like I, I've, I've already had messages now, privately. You know, people message me all the time privately, but if I can just keep on reaching out, every time someone messages me, I want to reach one more one person, and then reach one more one person, because eventually it, it escalates to, to more than just one person. Uh, there, is a, there is a link. We have a Facebook page, and uh, it's called Pedal number two, Perth, number four, Paul. And uh, the best way you can help us is to go onto the page, click like or interested or, or coming along, share the, share the FM page far and wide, and read the story, get the story out there. And just, we want to reach those people suffering in silence, those men, men that are stuff, suffering in silence. And that's, that's the main reason behind the event. It's not about donations and stuff like that there, although they are important for us personally, it's reaching those men suffering silence.